Hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to our massive tutorial um, on creating a 2D side scroller in um, Unreal Engine 4. Um, in today's session, uh, as you know, we currently looked at moving platforms um, on a level. Uh, yet in our last session, we looked at creating moving platform by using a BP, which I find probably the, the best route. Um, but you do have the other option of creating moving platforms with matinees. Um, and matinees are pretty much, again, just animation um, that we can place um, inside our levels or our game. And we can tell that matinee um, to do um, exactly the same stuff, but you can actually see it live um, and working with inside your game. So without further ado, uh, let's move ourselves um, into Unreal. Uh, so let's just uh, change your screen. And as you can see, we pretty much stopped off uh, where we finished off last time. So if I press Alt P, uh, actually on here will be a good idea. Um, you can see we actually created our moving platforms. Now remember these were the platforms on the Z axis. Um, so they were going up and down. Uh, we could have made platforms on the X axis. I can actually show you how to do that maybe at the end of this tutorial. Um, or if anyone requests it, maybe um, I can do that. Um, so you can see that we have got these platforms that we have created uh, by using uh, blueprints. But what we're going to do in this session is we're going to look at how do we create uh, platforms by using matinees. So really matinees are just pretty much a movie sequence and we can trigger matinees with trigger boxes or um, or you go, you press a button and it will trigger the event. But we could do the same with the blueprints. I mean, you could have done exactly the same thing. Uh, however, what we can see um, is we can actually see the matinee um, working quite nicely within the game. So you have smooth transition. Whereas if we had a look at this, this is not very smooth. It's very um, it's a very harsh movement. Um, it doesn't look very smooth at all. It doesn't slow down when it gets to the top. Or um, yeah, it just doesn't look very nice. But for very retro style games, this is what it used to look like. So I don't mind that harshness, to be honest. And if you had um, probably a better sprite, it might look a lot more better. Um, than that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create this matinee and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm actually going to find a sprite um, that we have got. Uh, we might use a different one this time just for an example sake. Um, let's use let's use this one. Okay, so we can use this sprite um, if we wanted to. So let's uh, just drag that onto our scene so you can see I'm just placing it. Um, again, nothing too crazy. However, before we even start making matinees, uh, there is something very important that we need to make sure that is active. Um, because this is going to be a sprite that's actually going to be moving, uh, we need to make sure that the sprite uh, knows that it can be moved. Because currently, anything that you place inside your map um, just pretty much thinks, okay, I'm just going to stay here. Nothing's going to happen with me inside the game or the level. So we actually need to turn this into a movable object. And that's quite simple to do. If we just look on our right hand side here, um, we can change the mobility to a movable object. Uh, so basically that's now going to move. Um, if we make a matinee for it, it's actually going to move itself um, where we ask it to move. Now, instead of using a blueprint, as I said, we're going to be using matinees for our sequences. Um, and to create a matinee, we go to where it says cinematic and we're going to add a new matinee. Now let's jump onto my other screen. So I'm actually going to bring this over. And what we have is pretty much the matinee actor uh, that we're going to create for our object. Uh, in this case, our sprite. Uh, as you can see, there's just a sign there, but that's not our sprite we're working with. That's just the director's card. And as you can see, it's very similar to what we did with our blueprint. There's not much difference in regards to uh, what we're working with uh, in, in this example. I mean, everything's pretty much the same as what it looked like in the blueprint. However, you have a little bit more control here um, in what we're working with. But there are a lot of features up here. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Uh, I'll probably leave these for when we make a cinematic for the game. So say, for example, we make a main menu uh, for our 2D side scroller. We can make a nice little cinematic um, for the menu system or um, yeah, these are all to come. So we probably might start looking at a few of these. But all we want to do um, is animate uh, our object that we placed by using a math name. Now we can see here on the track, this is the very important part is the track. This um, curve editor, we're going to forget about this for now. This curve editor is something special of its own. Um, but we're actually going to just look at this track area here. 
Now, by looking at the track, we can see that there's these two solid white lines. Uh, this basically represents the beginning of the timeline, um, and this represents the end. And as you can see, um, it's currently set to 5, so this very um, dark white line here is set to 5. However, the animation is actually not going to run a complete 5 seconds, because what we can see is this green one here. And this green section here is actually how long is the animation going to run for. Um, and currently, as we can see, it's only set for 1 second. So we can actually move this, so just click and drag it all the way to 5 seconds. So we can make a 5 second long animation. If you wanted to change that, click and drag on the red line. Uh, sorry, that's not right at all. Let's try that again. Click and drag on the red line, um, and you'll be able to move that uh, to depend on where you want that to be. Now again, we can snap to the grid, so if you wanted to snap, we can snap. So you can see we can snap now to these seconds. If you turn the snap off, um, obviously, we have a little bit more freedom uh, of where we want to place. And you can see that the numbers are changing on the bottom left um, of how many seconds we currently at. So if you want it to be so many seconds, this would be your best option. But if you wanted to keep it even, obviously, you just snap. So I'm going to leave it to five seconds just for this tutorial. Okay. So to make our matinee, all we have to do is right click. And we're going to create a new empty group. Okay, and we can call this anything. Um, for example, I'm going to call this tutorial, uh, tutorial platform. Okay, um, and basically this is just going to make a group for us um, of, it's just going to hold um, anything that we create inside that. And you can see um, that we've got all these things inside um, our folder. In, oh, if you want to call it, you can call it a folder. But inside the group, um, we can now add some extra stuff in regards to this. But there is a sneaky way we can do this. Instead of trying to find it so we could add, I don't know, whatever we were going to do in a second, um, there is a, a simpler way of doing this. And what we can do is select the sprite that we're trying to manipulate. So the sprite we're wanting to use is this one here. Okay. So if we click on that, right, you'll notice if I right click, I can now add the selected actor. All right, so uh, that's just one quick technique I found out that if you actually select the actor, um, you can then add that, that actor directly to the scene itself. So you'll notice now we've got this camera, which means this uh, actual uh, folder or group that we currently have um, has now got the actor attached to it. Now, technically, it's not really an actor as in a blueprint actor, um, but if you think about film, um, it will be um, an actor in a film, pretty much. So what we need to do is, it's pretty much self-explanatory, is that we're wanting this to move, for example, up and down, maybe. Um, this is probably the easiest option, I suppose, is to move it up and down, considering our um, map is rather small. And movement, well, moving, is pretty much movement. So what we can find inside, if we right-click um, onto our group, if we go down, there should be something called Add a New Movement Track. And here, here's it here. All right, so we're going to add a new movement track. Okay. And as you can see straight away, it's made a key. Right. So it's actually made its own key at a zero state. So that's basically saying, well, it's made a keyframe in its, in its main state. And basically, it's just going to refer back to zero. Okay, so it's just going to go back to zero. Now, if I'm wanting to move this up, right, so if I want to move it up to here, right, I'm going to select how long on the timeline I want that to be. So, um, just like I did with the blueprint, I'm going to take that to two and a half seconds. So, two and a half seconds. And I'm actually going to move this up. Okay, so I'm actually going to move it up. Physically, you've got to physically move this up. Um, actually, I closed the matinee, sorry. And I'm going to add a key once I move that up. Now, you'll notice I've got a key at basic state. Now, two and a half, it's now up. Now, you can see there's a line it's created. All right, so it's, this is its movement track here. All right. And now, if I wanted to go back down, I'm going to go back to a zero state. Okay, so five seconds. But the zero state needs to be back down at the bottom. Now, 
Again, snapping might be very important here, so we can actually turn our snap tool back on, and we can snap it all the way down. And you've got to try and line up the center to that very last one there. I mean, it doesn't have to be spot on for the tutorial, but we'll try and make it as easy as we can. And now we add the key. And basically what we have is an animation from the beginning to the end of five seconds with that animation going up and down of the sprite. So let's see if we can actually see this working. So if I just move this to the side and click and drag. So you can actually see that's moving up and down, up and down. And basically that's the animation. So if I to play, you can see that the actual animation is playing um, and it is working from a zero state i.e. down here where it originally was with the key. We then took two and a half seconds, because that's midway of five seconds. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we added a key, but we needed to make sure that this was at the top. All right, so the sprite that we had was at the top. Otherwise, if you try to add a key when it's down here, it would think that the key is back at that zero state. So even if the animation had to play, for example, so from here, to here it would still be at the bottom so it's very important that you move it up before you make the key very very important and then what we did is we moved our timeline to the fifth second brought it all the way back down to the, the bottom so its original location um, and added yet another key okay and that's pretty much of how we would create the matinee actor, a very basic one for now, uh, bear in mind. It's not one of the most advanced um, matinees. I mean, there's plenty more that you can do, okay? And I'm just going to close the matinee, All right? So we're going to close that down, okay? And we're going to find it, uh, so if we click on it, um, you can see it's just going to select the um, sprite. But I want to show you something if we play the game. So yes, here we are in game. And as you can see, our matinee is not doing anything. Uh, the matinee is definitely not moving. Um, it's staying exactly where it is. And that's because we haven't told it to do anything. Uh, we haven't said, okay, um, maybe when the game starts, you can play. Or maybe when I go near a trigger box, you can play. Um, and all those different variables that we have inside the game. I mean, there's loads of things you can do to activate these matinees. But the most easiest option I'm going to choose is I'm going to go and find my matinee actor. So here he is here, the matinee actor. And if we look at its details panel, so just here, if we go down, you can see we've got this play. And what we're going to do is we're going to say play on level load. So that's just going to play it straight away. So when the level loads on the screen, it's going to start playing. And we're going to put on looping. So just like we had with our um, blueprints, so it just kept on going up and down we can just leave that on looping, okay? So let's uh, save that and play. And now if we have a look, the matinee will now start moving in the locate. Oh, geez, sorry. It's just that jump is too much for me. I still need to change that. And you can see that the collision's all working um, and everything that we want with inside the, oh, a few glitches like, um, but you can see that the matinee is currently working. Now, the problem with having matinees is, yeah, it looks like a very nice, smooth transition, but you cannot move these matinees. Um, every time you want to make a platform using a matinee, um, you'll have to go through this whole process over and over again. So if you could imagine you've got maybe 25 moving platforms um, in your game, and that means you're going to have to do 25 um, matinee actors inside the game. So I, I normally find blueprints probably the easiest option, even though it might not look as good, um, but it for a temporary base, so if you're trying to just make a, a, a prototype, for example, um, works really well. So I hope you, um, you enjoyed that session on working with matinees. If there's um, anything you want me to show you in regards to matinees of um, how to start it, maybe with a trigger box or um, maybe in location, please let me know in the comments box or send me um, a mail or, I don't know, try and get in contact with me somehow and I'll try and um, help you as much as I can. All right, everyone, I'm Wayne. It was nice taking you for this session. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next session uh, where we will probably start looking at giving our character a widget. So we're actually going to start looking at creating widgets for our screen.
Okay, thank you again, and I'll see you in our next tutorial. Goodbye.